Hi everyone, my name is Alex Martinez. I am a developer advocate here at MuleSoft. And in today's video, we are going to learn how to implement an integration using MuleSoft in Data Cloud. We already learned how to set up all of your settings in Salesforce so you are able to connect to Data Cloud directly from any integration that you create in MuleSoft. In this video, you will now learn how to apply that knowledge into an actual Mule application. We will learn how to integrate the Data Cloud module with a Mule application to be able to query, insert, and delete records into Data Cloud. So let's get started then. So to start creating our global configuration, let's make sure that you create a new Mule configuration file under source main Mule. And in our case, we are going to name this global. Now this is where we will be adding all of our global configurations. So the first thing we need is to import the data cloud module from Exchange. To do that, let's open the command palette and search for Exchange. And you will see here the MuleSoft import asset from Exchange. So click on that. Next, select connector. And it will ask you to sign in to your Anypoint platform account. So let's do that. Once you're in, search for the asset. In our case, we're going to search for Data Cloud. And here you have the Salesforce Data Cloud Connector Mule 4. This is version 1.1.0, but it may have changed if you're watching this from the future. <laughs> so select that version again. And you will see here that it's telling you that a build has been modified in the palm. So do you want to synchronize? So you can select yes. Once the dependencies have been added, you can open the palm XML just to make sure that it was actually added. So let's make this bigger. And if we scroll down, this is repositories, dependencies, and here we have the Mule 4 SDC connector. SDC stands for Salesforce Data Cloud, version 110, and this is a Mule plugin. So once we have that, we can go here to global.xml. Please note that I am using the Anypoint Code Builder version that was released on February 2024. So maybe by the time you watch this video, you will be able to create global configurations using the UI. For now, I will have to add them manually, but you can still take a look at my XML. So if I start writing SDC, I will start getting the different configurations. So let's select SDC config. We can change the name to data cloud config. And then here we need to make sure we add the authentication method. So if you search for SDC, you will be able to see that we have the auth uh, JWT connection or the username and password connection, which is the one that we are going to be using. So select that and you will be able to see the client ID, client secret, username, password, and audience URL. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace all of this with actual properties. So we leave the actual value inside the properties. And once you are done, this is how it should look like. You can use whatever property name you want. This is the ones that I selected. So I have Data Cloud Consumer Key, Data Cloud Consumer Secret, Salesforce Username, Salesforce Password, and Salesforce URL. Now let's add the configuration properties. And I'm just going to select this as config.yaml. So we need to create this file now. Make sure you save your file. And now under source main resources, let's create a new file that is called config.yaml. Oops, it created it in a different place. Let's move it. Perfect. Now these are the properties that we are going to be using. We have data cloud, consumer key and secret and Salesforce username, password and URL. For URL, you can use login.salesforce.com. For the rest, please make sure that you put your own credentials Please note, if you just want to test this out locally, you can just put your values directly there. But if you are going to be deploying this or putting it in a GitHub repo or something like that, make sure that you actually secure your credentials and you do not just commit all of your values just like that because that is a huge security issue. So make sure you either encrypt them or you hide them using something like GitHub Actions and you put them in the GitHub secrets or variables. After you add that, let's go back to the global XML and add an HTTP listener configuration so we can start creating our flows. 
So now in our main configuration file, let's go ahead and click on build a flow. We can change the flow name from here. So let's name this query. And now let's add an HTTP listener. So we can go here to connectors, HTTP listener. And then let's change this to the listener that we created. And this path is going to be query as well. I'm going to change the name to slash query. So I remember which one this is. And after that, let's add another connector. This is going to be a sales for CDP one. And note that you have the option to select any of the bulk connectors, which is better for you if you want to upload more than 200 records at a time. In my case, because I am going to be using less than 200 records at a time, it is better if I just use the streaming one, but that's in a moment. For now, let's just select query. And now if, if we open the query, let's select the data cloud config that we had previously created and the body is the payload. And that is all. It will take whatever we send it in the HTTP listener and it will query our data cloud instance. So make sure you save this XML and we can start running it from the run window. A little mistake in the configuration. Make sure that your properties file ends with .yaml instead of YML. And it has been deployed. Awesome. So we can start testing this. I already have here a query, sorry, a request from Thunder client. So localhost 8081 slash query, and this is a query that I'm going to be sending. So it has to be a JSON format with the SQL key, and then you will need to put there your query. So click on send, and we successfully retrieved whatever was on our query. So here in data is where you will be able to see the results of the query. In our case, this is empty because we haven't inserted anything to data cloud yet. So let's go ahead and add a new flow from here. Now, same as before, let's change this name to insert and then click on new connectors, HTTP listener. So let's change the configuration and the path is going to be insert. Same with this. Let's change this to insert. So we remember which one it is and then create another connector. So sales for CDP. And as I said before, you can select bulk, but for now we're just gonna select streaming. So uh, select streaming, insert objects. Now this is gonna ask for a few more things. In my case, I am just going to make these values dynamic. So for now we need to make this, or actually let's do it from the UI. So here we have the source API name, this is a function and I'm going to make it to come from attributes, query params. So now for the object name, let's do attributes, query params and object. Perfect. Next, the connector configuration has to be data cloud config and we can leave the rest like that. So Let's leave it like that, save this and run this to test it out. And once this has been deployed, we can go ahead and make the call. So we need to put the query parameter source, which is my ingestion API in my case, and object, which is runner profiles again in my case. So now if we go to body, what I'm going to do is that I am just going to put one of the fields. I don't want to use all of them just to demonstrate. So for example, my primary key is called MAID. So that is the one that I am going to create. Let's create three different ones. One, two, and three. So you have to have a JSON object with the data key. And then inside data, you need to have an array and each of these objects would be one item or one record inserted to data cloud. So let's send that. And as you can see, this has been accepted, but it's going to take some minutes to be reflected in data cloud. And after some minutes, we can see that it has been published. 
So if we take a look at the data, we have the MAID, which is our primary key. We have the two, the one, and the three. So they were injected or inserted correctly. So now let's go back to the main flow and click on add. Let's add another flow. Let's change the name. This is going to be delete. And let's add a connector HTTP listener. So same as before, HTTP listener config. This is going to be slash delete. And the path is delete. So now let's add the data cloud connector. So if we go to streaming delete, let's select that one. The delete has the same limit than the insertion in the sense that if you use the streaming API, then you will only be able to do 200 records at a time. Otherwise you should use the bulk. So same as before, let's do attributes, query, params, source. And for the object name, attributes dot query params object. Now here for the IDs in this current version of any point code builder, we are not able to edit this, but we are able to add it directly on the XML. So let's go ahead and delete that. And if we go here to the top, let's add the IDs query params. This is going to be a function and this is going to have payload. So you can save that and now you will be able to see here the IDs payload. Now let's save this and run it one more time. All right, so once this is running, we can go ahead and send the delete. In this case, I have the same query parameters, source, my ingestion API, object, runner profiles, and in my body, I just have a array of the JSON content. And these are the primary keys that you have created from your JAML schema. So in my case, this was MAID, the same IDs that I used to insert the data. So I'm gonna delete the records one and three. And once I send this, I received the 200K and the accepted true. And then we already have the two other objects have been deleted and we only have the one with the ID two. And that's it. You can create custom data cloud integrations with MuleSoft just by using the data cloud module and its variety of components to use the different data cloud APIs. This is just the beginning for you to know the basics of this module. We only use the HTTP listeners for the examples here, but you could create custom functionality using databases, cloud products, or even create complex transformations using Dataweave. So don't forget to check out the description of the video to see different resources that you can use. And as always, remember to follow us on all of our socials so we keep posting new content for you all. Please send us your feedback, your comments, subscribe, follow. And I will see you in the next video. I hope this was useful and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you get to do many other data cloud integrations with Millsoft. Bye.